Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome into Oliver Ames High School here in Easton, Massachusetts for game five of the Oliver Ames Holiday Tournament. This one is the consolation game of the female slate. It's Brockton Boxers versus the Oliver Ames Tigers. Coming into this thing, we had no idea, we had no idea to expect a consolation game between the hometown Oliver Ames Tigers and a very strong looking Brockton Boxers, but Walpole had a 62 to 31 victory over the Brockton, and Needham had a five point edge over the Oliver Ames Tigers, and that is how we end up here. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game Miles Jackson. Miles, it's the town next door. Yes it is, so it should be interesting. Easton much smaller as far as population than Brockton, but Brockton has um, many more students, but uh, the Eastern girls, uh, they're a pretty big team, as we can see here. I'm sure um, Brockton's got their hands full this evening with this consolation game. I believe the shot clock did not reset. Oliver Ames has a 3 to nothing lead. 18 seconds put on the shot clock, so minus 12. Maybe. Head coach Chris Connolly talking with one of the officials. First year head coach of the Brockton Boxers. We, won't, we want to talk about the coaching of the Brockton Boxers. New coaches across the board, freshman JV varsity. Freshman coach, no offense to Chris, might be my favorite. Hillary Filkins, my senior English teacher. Wow. Way back in the day at Brockton High is the new freshman basketball coach. She played uh, when she was in Brockton High herself. Mm -hmm. Took him on a lengthy tournament run. The new freshman basketball coach. It helps to be a teacher at Brockton High. She said she's got a number of the players on her team in class. As Brockton hits a three, Neilani Montero. Yeah, Oliver Ames, they got a lot of shooters they can shoot from the outside and they can also rebound the basketball well so Brockton's gonna have to work hard on the boards they're gonna have to hit the outside shots inside for Jade Wint her short jumper no good Jayla Smith scrapping for the rebound and this is gonna be a jump ball yeah nice hustle down there by uh, Smith talk about Brockton basketball history her father Marcel Smith one of the all-time greats of Brockton High that sounds very familiar Marcel likes to go back and forth on Twitter with all the uh, the Herald writer Danny Ventura and Greg Dudek and us. Very fun as all the Rams hits another two. They take a five to three lead a minute and a half into the first quarter. Gee, nice drive, Abby, drive by uh, Abby Reardon. Fernandez down low, what a bounce pass to Jayla Smith. And Smith makes no mistake laying it up off the glass and in. Yeah, good job by Jayla, make sure that shot is made. Got to make them shots, some easy ones. Reardon drawing the block against Smith. A size mismatch there. Smith is the shortest member, the shortest player on the court. Yeah, that foul, I believe, was on Fernandez. Her first. The game coming up, the Needham Rockets and the Walpole Rebels in the girls title game tomorrow night. Very excited to have an all Brockton final. The Cardinal Spellman Cardinals and the Brockton Boxers. It should be a great game. Marquee matchup, the first time they've played, Tom Kenny told us, possibly ever. I'll tell you, that, that's great for the city of Brockton. Might start something. Abby Reardon in alone with Elizabeth Williams in Reardon's lap, no good. Loose ball sent out to number 35, Kayla Raymond, had a huge game last night. Montero can't handle a pass. Regains her composure, Elizabeth Williams to Jayla Smith. 
Back to Williams. Williams pump fakes for three. Now the overhead football pass to Annalisa Fernandez. Fernandez loses it to Katie Flint. Yeah, it looks like she just kind of gave it to the uh, Olive Reims defender. Just lost control of the basketball. Raymond's big game last night helped out by a couple of three-pointers. And the center can shoot the ball very well. And Fernandez is going to be called for another block. Yeah, it's going to be Fernandez's second foul. Spellman last night able to pull away from Southie. South Boston Knights. A lot of fouls in that game. Real count, there was about 537 of them. Wow. Eight against Spellman in the third quarter alone. Referees wouldn't let him play. And towards the end of the game, it got ugly. We had two South Boston players foul out. One of the Cardinals fouled out. And then there was a weird sequence. So imagine this. They line up, Southie lined up to take some free throws. Spellman was whistled for a technical after that. I guess one of the, the Spellman players, Craig Faria, said something to the officials or muttered something under his breath. He was given a tech. Southie thought the whistle was on them. So the Southie player at the line, who is ready to take his free throws for being fouled in the first place, gets a double tech. Kicked out of the game. He got tossed. The coaches, I think, someone got a text somewhere in there for arguing. It was crazy. Wow. So Faria had to leave the court. Spellman. So now there's double text. There's offsetting text. Each team should have gotten two free throws. Southie had two technicals in that sequence, so Spellman should have got two more after that. We haven't even taken the first free throw shot. Wow from Spellman's original foul against Southie. So what happened in the end was Southie had one free throw. And that was the end of that. And nobody knows what the heck went on. <laughs> We're sitting over here. I'm sitting here with Nubi. And I was like, Nubi, go figure it out. I don't care if I don't see you the rest of the game. I am so confused right now. Don't even know what's going on. We've seen whistles, arms waving around. We've seen tech. We've more whistles. And Southie ended up being severely undermanned. They lost their two top scorers in that sequence. The double tech and then someone fouled out. Wow. Wild. <coughs> Wild. And it all started because of a Spellman foul. So if Brockton, who was in attendance watching that game, can exploit the foul trouble that no Spellman can, will get into. Mm -hmm. It'll be an easy win for the boxers. Yeah. Well, looking forward to it. That being said, there's a very lengthy Spellman roster. It's about 25 kids. Wow. Nineteen kids on their roster, almost enough to field four strings of players, and every single one of them, save for a few, contributed last night. Wow! Well, I tell you, this uh, Oliver Ames team is really controlling the boards on their offensive end. Um, Brockton's having a tough time getting rebounds. First foul against Neilani Montero, the sophomore. Rather, the freshman. Montero, one of two freshmen on this team. Nairomi Forbes is the other one. Brockton calling a timeout. Going to talk about the facilities here at Oliver Ames. Beautiful gym. Beautiful gym right across the hall from a beautiful auditorium. This is, of course, part of that $18 million 
renovation addition. Excellent facilities here at Olive Rams. Yeah, very nice facilities. Admiring the banners, Hockamock champions. And a number so of sports the, here. So that's the thing. The Hockamock League champions, I get it. You won the division. Professional teams do it too. They they say Atlantic Division or, or AL East champions. I don't agree with it. I think it's like a participation trophy. Yeah, you won the division. You made it to the playoffs, but you got knocked out. Yeah. Well, it it, it looks good. It, it, gives it looks good. There's banners all over yep. the place. So you got to wonder. T the team spirit this thing. This side is all state championships. As more state championships roll in, do you start replacing some of the league championships? Yes, you do. Now, if they had one banner that said girls basketball Hockamock champions with all of these years. Yeah, that makes sense. I would agree with that. But one banner for each divisional. If you imagine Brockton with that, Brockton's won the big three for the last ever. Yeah. <laughs> I see they got they got my boys basketball Hockamock champs. Yeah, I was born, 1957. It's a good run for them. 57, 58, 59, 61, yeah. 62. Yeah. 64. 65. 65 boys and, and girls. girls. 1965, the birth year of my dream car. 1965 Shelby Cobra. The Shelby? Shelby. Cobra? Oh, yeah. Mustang? Yep. Yeah. If any of you guys out there are listening and want to get me the ultimate Christmas gift, 1965 Shelby Cobra. There's a three for Josilma Montron. Yeah, she almost walked. Took a little baby step. Nice shot, though. Foul. I think this is going to go against Fernandez again. Elizabeth Williams called for her second personal. Speaking of the Shelby Cobra, you were young in the golden age of cars. What was your first ride? It was the um, 67, uh, 67 GTO. I like the GTO. The twin turbo? Yes. Nice. lot sexier than my first car which was mom's car 2004 Toyota Corolla oh you're talking the first car I ever had first car you ever had oh I thought you were taking talking first some first. of my favorite first favorite car no I, I wish I did have a GTO my first car was a 1965 Pontiac Tempest two-door still the coupe coupe yep Nice to take to the drive-in with Mrs. Jackson. Yeah. One of my favorite summer activities, going to the drive-in movie theater down, there's one in Smithfield, Rhode Island, and one in Menden. You know, see, back in my day, you could go to the Skyview Drive-In right there in Brockton. Or the Avon Drive-In right down the street. You mean Brockton had a movie theater? Had a drive-in theater. Yes, they wow. did. Wow. Down on the south side. The sky view. There's a lot of room down there. I'd love to see them bring one back. Reardon comes up with a steal in alone off the glass and in. Yeah, Fernandez not doing a good job protecting that basketball. And a foul against Kayla Raymond. Went handing off to Fernandez to number 21, that is Nairomi Forbes into the game. Jade went high off glass, no good.
Reardon can't handle the pass out of play. Brockton ball. This continues a busy week for Brockton Community Access. Of course, we were here yesterday, all day, four games, back to back to back to back. You have to commend you guys for doing a marathon of basketball games, holiday tournament games. It was Brockton and Walpole first, Oliver Ames, and Needham second. And it was the Spellman Southie game, and then Oliver Ames and Brockton. Tonight we got two for you. It's Oliver Ames and Brockton in the consolation game, Needham and Walpole in the girls' championship game. And tomorrow we are right back at it. Another two games. It is Oliver Ames and Southie in the boys' consolation game. And Brockton and Cardinal Spellman in all Brockton final. If you thought we're done there, we're not. Not even close. Join us at AZ Arena on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock. Puck drop for Boxer Hockey versus Milton. And then we have exactly one day off. Inauguration special, January 1st, 10 a.m. No place we'd rather be. New Year's Day. The mayor's um, city hall. War Memorial. War Memorial, yes. War Memorial. That should be exciting. I'm going to try to make that. That's at what time? 10 a.m. puck drop. If anybody feels sorry for us that we have to work early on New Year's Day, we will be there at 7.30 in the morning. Feel free to bring a box of Joe and some donuts. Greatly appreciated. And along the same lines, I'd like to do birthday shout outs. You have anyone? Birthday coming up? Birthday coming up. Well, my granddaughter, Nia Alves, um, it was her birthday uh, early December. Well, middle of December, I believe it was December 18th. Hope I'm right. Happy birthday. Belated birthday, Neil. Our cameraman for tonight's festivities, the prolific cinematographer, Aaron Tebow. Prolific. Prolific. That def definitely describes uh, Aaron Tebow, man of great talents, skills. He's got skills. Mad skills. Mad with skills. A, with a Z. With a <laughs> Z. December 30th, Saturday, has a day off where we're freezing our you know what's off at the rink happy early birthday right now Aaron prolific cinematographer I'll tell you all the Rames girls are still control dominating the uh, boards here on their offensive end shot clock violation against the Tigers yet yeah, they had no clue that it was winding down a little bit of lack of communication there. Montero, deep three, no good. Went tipping the rebound. It finds number 22 of the Tigers, Ali Skolnick. Yep, Lady Box is getting one chance, one shot on the offensive end and not getting any offensive rebounds. Uh, and th they cannot continue that pattern. Um, otherwise, they'll never get any closer than 10 points. Right now, 2010. Down low and another block drawn. This one called on Jade Witt. Yeah, good foul by Jade. Jade has to make him work for those shots inside, and she definitely did good hard foul for the lady boxer. One-on-one -on -one situation. It should have been a one-on-one -on -one situation. Confused as to why it was only one shot, unless they didn't put the bucket on the board. It's 
21 to 10, all of Rams on top. And OA is in a one-on-one bonus situation. Williams scrapping for the loose ball. Yeah, she just lost the handle on the dribble. Brockton making a lot of mistakes this evening. They don't look like themselves. It's hard to get motivated for a game, not only during school vacation week, but a consolation game. And that's true. Deep three for Williams, no good. Fernandez grabbing the rebound, reverse layup is good. Nice job by Fernandez. Tough shot to put back up, but she did it from underneath the backboard. Lady Boxers needs to get those hands up. A lot of those passes that the uh, Lady Tigers are throwing in the inside are kind of sloppy. Montero's attempt no good. 21-12 now away on top. Fernandez coming down with the loose ball as the tempo is picking up just a little bit. Fernandez very nicely spinning. Yeah, very nice job. Going coast to coast. Boxers have cut this deficit down to seven points. Jump ball called away to retain possession. 16 on the shot clock. As Katie Flynn comes back into the game, she replaces number 23, Alex Sheldon. Another jump ball. That's one thing. We noticed last night, ton of jump balls called. A couple things we noticed about the officiating last night. In addition to the number of jump balls, an abnormal amount of illegal screens called. Williams to Wint. Went for a long two is good. Yeah, Wynn can hit that shot for for a big lady boxer with the, with her height. She has no problem taking that outside shot. The girls slate in this tournament, very young. Between the four teams, ten seniors. Yeah. No more than three on any single team. The boxers have two seniors. Number three for number 34, Megan Hollerin is good. Yeah, Box is gonna have to put some pressure on those outside shots that the Lady Tigers are taking. Still for the Tigers. And taken back by Elizabeth Williams of the Boxers. Bounce pass for Fernandez, she couldn't handle it. Now it's Raiden in alone. And she's fouled from behind by Elani Montero. Yeah, good hard foul by Montero. Didn't let her get, a, get, get the, give her a chance, the opponent a chance to put the ball up in the basket. Would have been an easy basket, but she made it tough on her. That's her second foul. The loose headband or armband on the court. Just breaking the action. Stay warm. It is very cold outside this week. It is exactly one and a half degrees outside right now. Sit back, relax, watch some All of Rams holiday tournament action. Brockton have a tough time breaking this Lady Tiger press. They've been doing it all day. Went little, all the way in, but yeah, she traveled. took uh, a few too many a steps. A few too many, not, not just one, a few too many. Yeah, the Lady Tiger's doing a great job on the offensive, uh, on the defensive press. 
inbounding when the box is inbound to basketball. This pressure right away. Loose ball, another jump ball called. Boxer basketball. Went breaking the press down low to Fernandez, the dribble, and the layup is good. Yeah, nice pass by Went. You almost think, you make those little tweaks during the game, don't dribble that ball. Exactly. You still had, you got that, you had plenty of room, you still had the two steps, just go straight up. Reardon with the Hail Mary couldn't control it. Corey Harney in for the Tigers, wearing number double zero. See the double zero, there's only one person you think of for the Boston Celtics. The Chief. Chief himself. A lot of the banners hanging in this gym. Mirror the years of the Boston Celtics. The Chief, Robert Parrish, Larry Bird. Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale. Dennis Johnson, Danny Ainge. A lot of contributors. I honestly did not know. So I was born in 1993. Wow. I am getting a little bit older now. But I did not know that Danny Ainge was such a savage when he played. Yeah, he was. Um, you think of those teams. Danny Ainge kind of fits in there as the four or five guy. Yeah, he was one of them guys you wouldn't want. The defense wouldn't want him to get hot from the outside. He could shoot that three-point shot um, with accuracy. Always complained out on the court to the referees. But um, don't let him get hot. And I learned this fact. There's not much that ESPN does right these days. But their 30 for 30 series is phenomenal as Annalie Lorenzo misses a three. And another jump ball. This one will go to the Tigers. Yeah, nice job by Fernandez to get in there and get her hands on the basketball to force the whistle. 30 for 30. Miles is a sports fan. You must have seen it. Celtics-Lakers rivalry. A two-part 30 for 30 special. Unbelievable. Yeah, back in the 70s and the 80s, it was an event when the Lakers and the Celtics got together, and especially when Larry Bird and uh, Magic Johnson came, came into the NBA at the same time in 70, uh, 78, 79 season. I mean, you match up those teams, you got to have a dozen Hall of Famers between oh, the two. It, it was just incredible back there, back then. The players you had on the basketball court for both teams. People are saying the rivalry is renewed or whatever you have it is. Fernandez hits the floor, grabs the rebound from her knees out to Montron for three. It's good. Nice hustle by uh, Fernandez, like you said, on her knees to get that rebound and smartly pass it to the open man outside. That 30 for 30, 30 for 30 two part series, my second favorite of all the 30 for 30s. Number one, if you ever have nine and a half hours, a five part OJ Simpson special. That was phenomenal viewing. Yes, it was. It was an excellent show that was put together. And they, they covered everything yeah. LA race riots. Yeah. Did a nice job in detail. Five subs as Brockton sends out its five starters again. 
Yeah, it looks like Al Rames has their key players out there again. Some of them. Well, Brockton's within 10, a minute left in the <coughs> first half. It's 31-21 Tigers. Went for three, good. Nice job by Went. Nice touch for the three. Since we're talking Celtics Lakers, you know, pe people saying rivalry renewed. Lakers drafted Lonzo Ball after we took uh, Tatum. We took Markel, or we traded the first pick that everyone knew was going to be Markel Fultz. First overall, we traded that to Philly. Drafted Jason Tatum, who has been on fire for the Celtics. Third overall after the Lakers took Lonzo Ball. Just. Yes. This is a little pet peeve of mine. Just because a team drafts a certain player and that the two teams are good again does not mean the rivalry is back. Exactly. You th I, I mean, Red Sox, Yankees, it's always a rivalry because of the two teams in the division or whatever. The rivalry isn't there just because the Yankees have Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge. The rivalry was there because back in 04 and 05, Jason Veritek was punching A-Rod. Listen, the rivalry goes back even further than that before you were born. In the late 70s, 78, when the Red Sox had uh, Carlton Fisk as their catcher, Yankees had Thurman Munson, and uh, they were both two tough guys out there catching for each of, each of our teams. And um, there was, let me tell you something, there was some uh, good scraps and some hard baseball played back then. But that's what builds a rivalry, not just because one team has exactly. a specific player. No, exactly. It's like, I don't consider Pat's Jets a rivalry right now. But back in the, the, um, the, the early um, 2000s or whatever, sure. What, 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 when we had um, Bill, Bill Parcells. Yeah, Bill when Parcells. He didn't want to play for the, he didn't want to coach for the Jets, so he was there for a minute and jumped over to the Patriots. Check, yep. That was a big rivalry back then in the 90s. And when both teams were good, yeah, and there was slugfest every game, that's a rivalry. The first half has come to an end. It's 34-24. Olive Rams on top of the Brockton Boxers at halftime. And game five of the Olive Rams Holiday Tournament. We're going to step aside and take a short break and bring you second half action right after this. Patriotism. It inspires passionate debate. It's worn like a badge of honor with good reason because it means love and devotion for one's country. But what really makes up this country of ours? It's the people. To love America is to love all Americans. This year, patriotism shouldn't just be about pride of country. It should be about love, love beyond age, sexuality, disability, race, religion, and other labels. Because love has no labels. Listen. All it took was someone who would insist that I just try. Suddenly everything was turned around because they judge you. You tell them, I don't need this. No one is going to understand. Unless they've been through it, how can they? Then one day you realize, you feel so hopeless. I need help. I need help. You feel so hopeless. Then one day you realize... Unless they've been through it, how can they understand? I don't need this. No one's going to judge you. Suddenly everything was turned around because they insist that I just try. All it took was someone who would just... Listen. Stay now, 
Ladies, gentlemen, boys, and girls, basketball fans of all ages, welcome back into Olive Rams High School for second half action between your Brockton Boxers and the Olive Rams Tigers. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, big game, Miles Jackson. Miles, first half of the Constellation game had an interesting feel to it. Olive Rams dominating, especially on the boards. But the score doesn't say that. It's 34 to 24. Brockton still in it by every stretch of the imagination. Elani Montero, who has had a big game for the boxers, gives it off to Elizabeth Williams, the sophomore captain of the Brockton boxers. She puts it off the glass. No good. Now Abby Reardon. Brockton wearing their away black jerseys. White strike down the side. Red trim around the white numbers. Olive Rams in their home whites with orange lettering surrounded by black trim. Yeah, the boxers, Lady Boxers are going to have to do a better job in this second half to make shots. Just to stay with this hot Olive Rams team because they're hitting their shots starting right off in this second half. talk about the jerseys the black Brockton boxers jerseys pretty much across the board every sport is the better look definitely I wish that the NBA would go the route of every other professional sports league and wear home colors at home they wear white at home so say if the Lakers come to town they would be wearing yellow jerseys with purple trim and the Celtics are wearing white with green trim. And that trickles all the way down to high school basketball. I tell you, in the NBA, you just know what they're going to come out with. Brand new city jerseys, quote unquote. It's the city line from, was it Nike is their jerseys? Or Adidas maybe? The Celtics one actually looks pretty good. It's like a, it's gray with green lettering and black trim. Yeah, that is in fashion. Wow, what a shot. It's Fernandez. We didn't have a good look, but it looks like she got fouled, but we were down at the other end of the court. Looked like there could have been contact, but a nice job by Went. Speaking of jerseys, Raymond down low off the glass, no good. Rebound, putback attempt is good for Alex Sheldon. There's some uniforms that are just straight memorable. For me, there's only one choice. The red throwback Pat Patriot jerseys with the white helmet, Pat Patriot on the side, white pants, and red socks. Yeah, that was back in the days when you really had to be a true Patriots fan because a lot of times there wasn't a lot to cheer about. Of course, the Patriots able to wear those. Ooh, nice defense right there. Williams saying, no soup for you to kill a Raymond. Exactly, nice defense. Patriots able to wear those jerseys all the way up until a few years ago when the NFL said there's no secondary helmets allowed because there's a greater risk for concussions if you use a different helmet than the one you've worn all year. I don't know how much I believe that. There's so much tech in those helmets. You gotta think, first of all, when you've got a 275 pound man running full speed into your head, wearing a hard piece of plastic on his head, it doesn't matter what you're wearing on your head, you're going to get a concussion. Exactly. So they outlawed the white Pat Patriot helmet. And along with that went the throwback jerseys. Now they get this 
don't even get me started on adjectives. Color rush jerseys. <laughs> and the Patriots version of this, navy blue, red and white stripe across the shoulder. I call them a Houston Texans ripoff jersey. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So with the blue pants. With the, with the navy blue pants. The interesting part, a team can opt out of wearing the color rush jerseys on Thursday nights. The Redskins did this on Thanksgiving. Their jerseys, their color rush jerseys, a soft picture of what they would have looked like. I feel bad for the camera people. All gold. Yeah, that was rough. Gold pants, gold jerseys, maroon numbers. Who's designing these things? Yeah. I mean, I get it. The whole goal is to take the third color and emphasize it. So if you if you really want to take this up a notch, make every team wear throwback jerseys. Or yeah. for the Patriots, go red. Yeah. Wear the red throwback jerseys with Pat Patriot. Red pants. It would look phenomenal. Yeah. Defense got a piece of that ball that uh, Lorenzo was trying to put up. This is Abby Reardon with it. Fernandez going for the steal. Unsuccessful, and now Hollerin down low, putting it off the glass and in. Yeah, nice execution on that play by the uh, Lady Tigers. Jade Wint with a floater is good. 42-28, a 14-point edge for the Tigers. Abby Reardon looking to extend that lead. Flynn down low is good. Yeah, Lady Tigers are very good on the inside, scoring points. Foul on Brockton. Just talking about all different sports. I gotta ask you, the Patriots have a chance. Actually, that foul was on um, all on the, the, on the Tigers. Yes, Fernandez is at the line. That is the third personal foul against Abby Reardon. So the Patriots have a chance to win three Super Bowls in four years. Yes. Much like the way they did way back in the day when the Mad Dog was eight years old. 01, <laughs> 03, 04. Do you consider this team a dynasty, as the Globe and the Herald put in their, their papers, the headlines back in 2004, as was that team? You, you have to with the way free agency is and it's so hard to keep players over a number of years. This has this organization is a dynasty type run organization. Um, you can't get any better than that. So along the same lines, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I wouldn't consider this team a dynasty. No, the organization. The organization since 2001. I would consider a dynasty of success. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely mean that. I've seen better teams out there on the, on the uh, gridiron right now than these, than this particular team right now. But no organization. I mean, the Patriots have not lost more than six games since 2001, and the one season they lost <laughs> six was 2008. They didn't have Tom Brady. He tore his ACL and MCL. Exactly. So you win 10 games with Matt Castle at quarterback. A tremendous run of success. I consider that 2001-03-04 team. And you kept that team together pretty good. You had Rodney Harrison, Asante Samuel, Teddy Bruschi, Tom Brady, uh, Troy Brown. You yeah, had all that, those guys. Yeah, that was an Richard awesome Seymour. collection. Whoa. We have a Tigers Reardon slow to get up. A collision there with Fernandez and Reardon. So I wouldn't consider this 
team, the, the team that has won or has a chance to win three Super Bowls in four years, a dynasty, as much as I would the Patriots since 2001. It's like looking back at the 70s and 80s with the Celtics' big run of success. The Celtics during that time were a dynasty. It's not just, what, four straight titles, five straight titles in the 80s. It's the run of success of the organization. Whoa, she went down hard on the layup attempt. Nice defense by the boxes. Naomi Forbes, the freshman, getting some experience. Elizabeth Williams. Again, the sophomore captain. Elected by her peers. Elected by the other Brockton boxers to be a captain of this team. One of the two returning varsity members from last year. Starters from last year, four returners overall. Good on her first attempt, 47 to 29. The score, Nairobi, uh, Nilani, excuse me, Montero in for Elizabeth Williams. Forbes having trouble getting around the Oliver Williams Tigers. Now a three for Montrond is good. Wow, that was from downtown. Like you said, good shot. Raymond, bad angle shot. Miles, we mentioned it last night with Newbie Ratto, seven time award winning director and producer. Gonna see if you agree with us. There's an abnormal amount of space between the baseline and the bottom of the net. There is. There's a lot of space lot to of work space, under yeah. the basket. Under the basket, you're right. I mean, there's, there's got to be four feet between the end of the basket and the baseline on either side of the gym. Interesting observation. And we see that because... For those of you watching at home, we are sitting in the far right corner of the gym next to the Oliver Ames bench. So we're pretty much even with the baseline. You can see exactly how much space is down there. There's a lot of room to work with under the basket. A lot of room. A lot of room. Strong to the basket is Raymond. She draws the foul. Yeah, she's a, she's a blue chipper. One of the senior captains on this team. Coming up next on Brockton Community Access, it is the Needham Rockets and Walpole Rebels in the girls' championship game of the Olive Rams tournament. Nice job there by the boxes. Bring it up quickly and hit the um, man going right to the basket. A two is good for Oliver Ames. Now shot clock is off. 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. 51 to 34. A 27 point lead for the Tigers and they come up yeah, they, they got a piece of that ball on that shot. Good defense. Long two, no good. The buzzer sounds. The third quarter has come to an end. 51 to 34, your score. Oliver Ames on top of the Brockton Boxers. Miles, the Boxers coming into this tournament at 3-0, undefeated with a couple of wins against Barnstable and Marshfield before falling to the Walpole Rebels yesterday. We didn't know 
really what to expect from first year head coach Chris Connolly or the program in general with only four returners from varsity last year four that played JV so you've got almost a completely new program a 3-0 start very very strong coming into the tournament we don't know much about the Walpole Rebels, the Nate Rockets, Oliver Ames. They're all in different divisions. Brockton's been matched up against some very good teams here in the Oliver Ames tournament. Yeah, and um, they've come back down to earth seeing the competition in this tournament. And uh, as uh, Walpole showed them what it was all about last night. So the Lady Box is um, it's good to get in some competition like this. It can only make you better. So, um, and they'll continue on after this holiday is over. Eight minutes on the clock to determine third place in the Oliver Ames tournament. Stay tuned because tomorrow night that is the big one. Very excited. Spellman and Brockton playing. Men's basketball for the first time, as former athletic director Tom Kenny told us, possibly ever. Spellman's in D3, but it doesn't matter. This is going to be a heavy, this is 15 rounds, heavyweight division. Before boxing changed the rules for the lightweights and made it 12 rounds. The real record holder, Rocky Marciano, before there was ever Floyd Mayweather. This is going to be a gritty, hard-fought, trenches battle. Yeah, there's definitely going to be some uh, tension in the air, only because they both teams know they're from Brockton, representing Brockton, and both teams want to come out on top. Yeah, so this is the first time they've played possibly ever, at least in the last 40, 50 years. This is like... You could, you could give teams bragging rights. This is the first awarding of bragging rights. Yeah, and this this um, gymnasium should be filled with um, Brockton fans. Packed last night. Packed for it was Brockton packed and last night. Rings. Good hustle there, Brockton's ball. Of course, you'll remember just a few short years ago, four years ago, Cardinal Spellman won the Division Three state title, dedicating that season to Joey Glynn, a former Cardinal who unfortunately passed away after his freshman year of college after cardiac arrest during a pickup game. So they dedicated that season to him, won the title, the story was on ESPN. This thing really blew up everywhere. There is one holdout from that team. When they won that title, he was a freshman. Now he's a senior. Admar Jamarillo, he's a point guard with phenomenal ability. Yeah, he's definitely got the skills. And he knows how to use them out there on the basketball court. And um, what can you say? He does his talking on the, on the court. 19 players on the Spellman roster. They are deep. They've got really three teams of very talented players that all contributed last night. Because I wasn't here last night. Basically, it sounds like Scrap. a team like Brockton has where they don't miss a beat with their bench players coming they're in. Not, they're not giving up much with their bench. There you go. So that looks like a very interesting game coming up tomorrow evening. And a fairly young team. The guys to watch in that one, Mike Spencer... A senior, along with Admar Jamarillo and Craig Faria, the big men. Patrick Gilday had a strong game for the Cardinals as well. That name sounds familiar, Miles, because his father is former attorney, now judge, Mark Gilday. And on the Brockton side, You've got Jerese Harris, who started off the game last night with a couple of threes. 
Abu Kaba, the 6'4 senior. And then you talk about sight. Brockton has not had a team this big in at years. least 30 years. Years. I, I've been around 20 of those years. 6'6", Tishon Glendardi. 6'7", Eldon Terry. 6'4", Abu Kaba. And 6'3", Sonny Okanlola. The names to watch for the Brockton Boxers. Well, I tell you, one of the names to watch coming off that bench is Azar. He's been really contributing. Marcus Azar, yep. Been really contributing in the last couple of games coming off the bench and giving the uh, Boxers the needed help. He had a phenomenal game last night as well. Yes, yes he did. He had at least 12 points, I believe. And the wild card in that one is going to be Jose Montero Jr. missing the last game in concussion protocol. He will be back for tomorrow night's title game. So it looks like a lot of fireworks coming up in our next broadcast. Well, our next championship broadcast. Jade went tipping the pass to in Alicia Fernandez. Went for three is good. Yeah, that's about a fourth attempt out there that she's made today. Fourth or fifth. Brockton has started to clog the passing lanes. And they, they have, and I'm sure that's what uh, Coach Colling told them when in, in the locker room to keep them hands up, make it tougher for these uh, Lady Tigers to pass that basketball. Catch and shoot for Raymond falls for two points. Yeah, that was executed perfectly. Nothing the uh, boxers could do there with the height advantage that... Uh, Raymond has the senior captain. Went for three, looks good, and it is. Jade Went, her third trace of the game. Yeah, Went's got the hot hand from the outside this evening. And she's been hitting the shots inside. That draws Brockton back within 11 points, and the boxers have the ball now. And Alicia Fernandez went calling for the ball the way she's shooting. You gotta give it to her. Fernandez fouls on her way in, will be at the line. Two shots. That was a nice fake by Fernandez. Made the uh, defensive player commit. And that's when uh, Fernandez was fouled. Timeout, Oliver Ames. Pretty hectic last two or three minutes. Brockton clawing their way back in. I say clawing. They were at the bottom of a well. And they are literally sticking their hands into the sheetrock and pulling themselves back up. While the water is coming down on them. While the water is coming down on them. Middle of the fourth quarter. Want to thank our cameraman for tonight's festivities. The one, the only, the prolific cinematographer whose birthday is on Saturday. Get him something. Mail it to 1 North Main Street. Just as long as it doesn't tick. As long as it doesn't tick. And as long <laughs> as it's not any sort of white powder. <laughs> please. <laughs> Prolific cinematographer Aaron Tebow bringing you the sights and sounds from Oliver Ames High School. Delivering in lieu of the postman. Postman, of course, we expected to deliver nine packages this week. And after announcing that he had such a heavy holiday load, sprained his ankle. Prayers up for the postman, who's Definitely on a so. crutch right now. He's on one crutch. He went to op to into work today. He's got a crutch in one hand, a coffee in the other. <laughs> he had no way to open the door. Couldn't get into the office. Jade Wint coming down with the loose ball that 
Could have been a shot, could have been a pass. Fernandez, spin around, jumper, no good. Olive Rames back the other way, halfway through the fourth quarter, it's 53 to 42, Olive Rames by 11, Brockton was once down by 18. And I think that's it for Fernandez, that's her fifth. That is her fifth. Well they get six. They get six in girls basketball. No, that is it. And Alicia yep. Fernandez has followed out of this game with four minutes, uh, three minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. She will be replaced by Nilani Montero. Jayla Smith also back into the game. Counting in one for number 23. That is Alex Sheldon. Three points the old fashioned way. Elizabeth Williams also back into the game. You've got to give it to Wint here. Let her shoot the rock from yeah. beyond the arc. Montero coming up with this one, a block from Raymond and out of play off of Jade Wint. Yeah, the boxes are just overmatched by size this evening. The Lady Tiger team is solid as a rock. Abby Reardon inside for now Tori Harney. Montron ripping down the rebound. Trying to get it to Williams. Does just that. Lady Tiger still playing tenacious defense from the time that the uh, boxers inbound the basketball to bring it up court. They really have worked hard just to get it up past half court. This one out of play. So you can see how much space we're working with down here on the baseline. There's maybe about four or five feet between the baseline, and I'm calling them the end boards. It's one of the Tigers chasing this one out of play as Williams takes a three, no good. Last night we had a couple of spills into the end boards. A foul. Gee, I didn't, I didn't see the foul. I, I didn't see a foul. I saw a travel. I saw um, Jayla Smith go in and grab for the ball. Her hands were on the ball, but I didn't see a foul. I don't know why you would call that with only 2.32 left in this ball game. Ba Lady Tigers up by 14 points. Nelani Montero is the player on the board called for her fourth personal. I thought they called it on Jayla Smith. Yeah, I think they got that wrong. And there's the change. It is Jayla Smith, her second personal. <laughs> Nelani Montero losing it but was fouled by Reardon. That might be Reardon's fifth. Reardon's fourth foul. Yeah, Montero's got to do a better job getting it to one of her teammates when she's inbounding the basketball. She went on the floor, can't grab the loose ball. Reardon working her way in. And Jayla Smith is going to be called with her third personal.
Williams has her three blocked. Nilani Montero coming down with the loose ball off the glass, no good. Grabs her own rebound, a one-handed lab, no good, and this is going to be a jump ball. Yeah, nice hustle there by number 10, Depina. Layla coming in, playing tough basketball. And she comes out. Carney down low for Ooh, nice, for nice Pollard. job by uh, by Went Jade Wynn on the block. Elizabeth Williams with it. Brockton down by 17, 59 to 42. Your score. OA on top, Nilani Montero with it for the boxers in the far corner. And Jasoma Montron. Eight on the shot clock. Jade went inside. Bad angle left, counted in one. Wow, she was hammered too and still made the shot. Moving well without the basketball. Nice pass inside. Three point play possibility. Jade went one of the bright spots this evening for the boxes. One oh four to go. The boxers down by fifteen fifty nine to forty four. Your score. Elizabeth Williams with it to Nilani Montero. Wide open three looks good, and it is. All of Williams playing the clock game. It's Abby Reardon. Reardon around the world in in. 60 to 47 your score with 45 seconds to go. Elizabeth Williams is the boxers Seemingly have chalked this up as a loss with 30 seconds to go and no urgency to shoot the ball. Two on the shot clock. Williams throws up a layup, but no good. Ball comes down and Olive Rams is going to clock it with now five seconds to go. Two, one. Thunder sounds, and game five has come to an end. 61 to 47, your final score. Oliver Ames claims third place in their own holiday tournament. Brockton coming in dead last in that tournament. Miles, there was a, a couple bright spots for the boxers, but a lot of things to work on in the week ahead. Yeah, a lot of things to work on. One thing is rebounding. They don't have a big team, so they're going to have to find another way of um, posi positioning themselves to get rebounds when they come across big teams like an Olive Rames um, high school team that was just excellent on the outside shooting, great on the inside shooting. They were, they were a great passing team. So Brockton had, a like you said, a, a, a big hill to climb just to stay with this um, Lady Tiger team. 61 to 47, your final score. Olive Rames getting the victory over the Brockton Boxers in the girls' consolation matchup here in the Oliver Ames tournament. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up on BCA, it is the Walpole Rebels and the Needham Rockets going at it for the girls' title. For everyone here at Brockton Community Access, my broadcast partner, Big Game Miles Jackson, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.